What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl. You guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So, of course, we're going to kick this off with a little bit of chit chatter, chit chat. You know, it is Wednesday, of course, but really Tuesday. So, the one thing that I want to touch bases on with you guys is a couple of stores are closing. Um, the one main store that is closing is an online web store and I absolutely love it um, just because I bought all of my individual lashes from this website and I don't buy the strip lashes because I always get the strip lashes from Shop Miss A. You know, they're a buck. You can't go wrong with that. They have some really nice strip lashes for a dollar. Um, so I do get them from there. But the main thing, the main goal, the main focus for my lashes in general Fuck the, um, the strips because they're not like a priority to me. Um, the individuals are a priority to me because I don't have any lashes. Um, and the reason for that is because just fucking with this lash glue over like 10 years has really jacked up my own natural lashes. So I depend, I rely on individual lashes, okay? And I do them myself and I make them look, you know... I, I make I, I put them on to where they're wearable for two weeks okay so that means I don't take them off because they're individuals I wake up with them I go to sleep with them there's no way on God's green earth am I leaving this fucking house without them now first of all like I was saying one particular website that I absolutely love is um, going out of business and I'm sad about that because I have shopped with them for like many years and like i said i definitely rely on them i depend on them for my lashes my individual lashes um and i know there's like loads of different websites that you can get eyelashes from you know um and such but this one particular website is like they have loads of different lashes from strips to individuals, like loads of them. And they always carry this one particular brand that I absolutely love. Now, if I buy this one particular brand at said store, they're charging like $2 more for just like one tray. So, you know, I'm not with all of that. But also, this particular website has loads of different makeup that's so affordable that, you know, you don't even have to leave your house. They have everything. Like everything you can only imagine um so with that being said first of all i was shocked to get the emails 40 percent off 50 percent off 50 percent off i was like what i don't need no makeup right now i don't need anything and i and i said to myself you do need some trays of lashes but you have a couple pair left you can wait I was really trying not to spend any money because, you know, I'm getting my teeth finished or fixed once again in March of the 6th of March. So I'm trying to just hold on to my money. One of my subscribers emails me and says, you know, do I know of any other websites that we can get lashes from? Because I Kate House is going out of business. When she said I Kate House is going out of business, I was like, what? Hold up. That's why they have all these sales. And I, my heart just dropped to the floor because I as well get my lashes from them. So, if you are familiar with IK House, they are going out of business and loads of their stuff is 50% off, okay? So, I'll definitely post the link for you guys right in this video so that way you can get your 50% off. You can get your shopping spree on, okay, with the coupon code and everything. But it really, really sucks because... I think they do like great business. They have like an amazing variety of makeup. You know what I'm saying? For those of us who are on a budget and who love makeup, I think they have like an amazing, just amazing, amazing, amazing variety of makeup. Like, and it's sad because it's like an, an era is gone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there are loads of different makeup sites that we can get makeup from. But when you rely on one in particular and you know that their prices are just hitting and you know that they have all of the newest new, like the, the new LA girls, HD or whatever, whatever you like. They have NYX. They have it all. They have an assortment of everything. So it just really sucks when you love something so much and you're like, why are they going out of business? Why? Why? So to me, it's like an era is gone. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm like really like hurt and heartbroken with them because I have kind of like grown with them. I, I started off with them 
from when they first started, like many, many, many years ago. You know what I'm saying? And it just sucks because I love everything that they have to offer on their website. And it's just so affordable. And to me, I feel like you don't have to spend a lot of money on cosmetics, you know what I'm saying, to get that same look that that model on the cover is wearing. Like, if you are good with your hands, you know what I'm saying, you definitely can give yourself like a beat face for under like 10 bucks. And it sucks because where the fuck can you find like really good lashes from? Like, seriously. So when she told me this, I was just like heartbroken. Like, what the hell? I better rack up now. And no, not don't get me wrong. I, there are some other websites that I love to shop at as well. Like, I love Shop Miss A. Okay. But everything on there is a dollar. And that's great. They have some really great stuff too. But they don't have everything that I Kate House has. Like these really great eyeshadow palettes with 35 colors and then, then some. You know what I'm saying? A little maybe knockoff. Um... Two Face palettes by a different brand, you know, and I love that. There is another website that I have introduced to you guys before, which was some months ago. However, um, which is Shop Hush or yeah, shophush.com. However, they don't have a huge assortment like um I Kate House as well. Now, I Kate House does have another website, which is um kind of like you can save while you buy. And I I'm not really sure if that website is going out of business. So I will definitely have to link it below for you guys if I remember, because you guys know my memory is bad. If I don't Please, someone, um, send me an email because I do have that website. I did do a video for them, like, uh, probably like a year ago, and I'll definitely link that below. Um, hopefully, that one isn't going out of business. Um, but iCateHouse.com is going out of business, unfortunately, ladies. So make sure you click the link below. Get the 50% of coupon there. Click the link below. So that way, you guys can get in where you fit in. Get your last last of goodies. 50% off is an this it's a nice amount. Now, granted, they don't have those really, really nice peachy palettes like, you know, the um, knockoff uh, Too Faced palettes, you know. Um, you can find those at other places as well, but I would have damn sure liked to have gotten it for 50% off. Though, my thing is this. I don't really need any new makeup, so I haven't purchased any new makeup from iKate House, but I did purchase some lashes. Okay, that's the thing that I did get. So, these are my lashes right here. Um, which really, 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 really sucks. So I purchased 28, um, trays of lashes, individuals, and I only wear the longs. Um, normally I just wear like, um, the ones with the knots at the end, but I decided just to go all out and try the ones without the knots. Now, granted, I'm probably going to go back on the website tonight and get some more because this is going to like really, really stress me out. And like I said, I'm not trying to leave the house without any lashes. I look like Kermit the fucking frog. I also did get these eyeliners from um from there as well. Now these, oh, they're midnight. I when it said midnight, I really thought midnight meant black. And now that I'm looking at the freaking color, it's like a navy blue. Now midnight to me is black. I don't know about anybody else, but I take midnight as being the color black. Now, this really sucks because I don't need blue eyeliner. Oh, hey. Okay, you know something that's crazy? The bottle looks blue. The strip on the paper looks is, is blue. And the color on my hand is black. I'm not going to complain because, like I said, I wanted it to be black, and yeah, that's what it is. Great. Now, I bought these. I think these are like a dollar thirty-nine. Now, normally you can get these at the Dollar Tree, but you know, I haven't had any luck with them at the Dollar Tree lately. They haven't been refilling up on the Elf and LA Color ones, the liquid eyeliner. Well, I haven't seen that at the Dollar Tree in the longest. And they do have this other brand that's a liquid eyeliner also, but I really don't like the applicator. So I just prefer this one right here. And I'm not about to buy those at Walmart because they're two bucks. Something that was a dollar, now two dollars, kind of like just fucks with my head. So yeah, definitely check out iCade House. 
I would like to know why because um, I really did like that makeup website. And for those of you ladies who know what I'm talking about, and how do you guys feel about iCade House? What is your thoughts about them? Do you like them? Are you going to go purchase some stuff before they're totally out of business or what? Um, and then, like, moving on, um, as you guys know, I did post up a rant video, like, was it, like, last week sometime? And, oh, God, this fucking waist trainer is killing me. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I did post a rant video up, like, a week ago, all right? And um, it was on this website, uh, this this company called, um, oh, my God. Monette, I think that's how you pronounce it, Monette. And it was basically just stuff for your hair. And so the young lady, she did email me asking me to um, review her products, um, review the products. She would send me a, samples, a sample for me and my daughter so that we can use it and try it out and see how it makes our hair growth, um, our edges grow back and so forth, you know, things of that nature. Now, when she said a sample, I really assumed, like seriously, I assumed like she meant like a full-size product. Um, when a company contacts me and they say, we'd like to send you a sample of some products for, for you to try out, they mean a, a full-size product, but it's free, meaning it's a sample. Here, hey, this is a sample for you. Try it out. It doesn't mean a fucking sample, like a little envelope side. So, you know, I was so excited about this because as you guys see, my edges are thin, okay? They are very thin. And this is just from wearing wigs over the past, um, since... 2009 okay 2008 so and I don't really take care of my hair like I should so this is nobody's fault but my own all right so if you, now you know why I wear like the um, Boldify hair fibers and things of that nature. Um, I haven't really tried anything on it to grow it back except for I've been putting Sulfur 8 on it. And me and my daughter, Nay, her edges are the same. They're not because of those reasons. It's because she's a hard thinker. And I say she's a hard thinker because she's one of those type of people that will sit there and she's really smart. She's like super duper smart. And she'll sit and she'll think so hard and she'll be picking at her hair. You ever meet somebody who just like picks at their hair because they're thinking so hard it's either that or her fingers okay so and the both of them look bad so she's finally stopped because i had to constantly get on her about it and um but you know her edges are gone not gone but you know they're not the way they should be she has thick hair so her edges are not gone but i think that they could look a lot better because she picks at them so anyway the lady said she's going to send this proper um this product and for samples of me and her my daughter let's see how they work out you know i would like to see what your thoughts are them i was so excited about this when i went to the post office box like i was saying in the video i got this thick envelope now when i say it was a thick envelope it wasn't like an envelope like that 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 yellow envelope that i just showed you it was like an envelope a regular envelope a white envelope like it say you were to write me a letter you know or you write somebody in jail a letter one of those white envelopes that you lick on the back i'm like damn somebody wrote me this long ass letter okay i'm gonna have to go home and read this no bitches it wasn't it was a sample there was three samples inside that motherfucking envelope for this bitch shampoo condition and that stuff to grow your edges up now first of all i just told you guys my name my daughter nay's hair is thick she has a lot of hair first of all and it's like almost down to her well it's probably like right down here like almost down to her backside, and it's thick it's like a 4c where the fuck you think she putting that shit in her hair i know i ain't got no edges and my hair is a little bit thinner you know what i'm saying my hair is a different texture but bitch that shit ain't enough for my own goddamn hair okay i was so upset about that because I was really excited about my edges growing back. Well, thanks to you guys who watched the videos. Um, I did get a lot of pointers and tips, and I'm so happy about that because um, one product, two products I've never heard of. The one product I did hear about, and I've had it for like some years, and I just never got around to using it, was the, um, the black Jamaican castor oil. Um, so I've been using that. And I'm glad to say that um, I want to thank the young lady who went ahead and emailed me about it. the young ladies, more than one person, young ladies who emailed me about this product because, you know, I did have it and I really thought that it was supposed to make your actual hair grow, grow. But after watching videos and reading those comments, a lot of people have used it to grow their edges back. So, you know, what my, my issue is this. I'm not as consistent as I should be with things, but I am have been very consistent with these products that I've been using lately since that video because I really do need my edges to grow the fuck back. Also, there was a product that I've never heard of before, which was called um, Kaleidoscope Miracle Drops. 
revitalizing hair follicles and strengthens weak hair. Now, let me tell you guys, I have never heard of this product until that day. The first comment I read, I thought she meant Kaleida colors like the hair dye, the hair bleach. And then when I kept reading on, I looked it up and it was this stuff, like a miracle in a bottle. So I said, all right, let me find out, you know, more about this product. Let me see if I can purchase it. $30 for this. I really did think that the bottle was much smaller because the picture did make it look smaller, especially with bottles like this. You always see with the little droppers that the bottles are smaller. So I hurried up and ordered this and I'm super excited about this because I've been using it every day since three to five times a day. Me and my daughter and they have been using this now. I mean, like it's probably like a little, um, you're probably not going to be able to tell anything. I've been using it and I took a picture. Um, so we shall see how this works out. I haven't been using like my Gorilla Snot Gel on my edges right here because I really don't want the product to interfere with this. So, you know, I just kind of like push my baby hairs down a little bit and just leave this portion here because I don't even need this to be gelled down. Um, so I've been using this and if anyone that's watching has been using this, please Tell me your story down below. I'm very interested because I want to know how long it took you to grow your edges back or how long this product took to start seeing changes. So I want to know everything that you did, how many times a week you've used it, what your thoughts are, uh, if, when you, if you stopped using it, did your hair come back out, et cetera, et cetera. I want to know. I'm very interested. And then I got an email. Only one person emailed me this, okay? And she is a beautician. She's had lots of um, clients with the same issues. And she told me about the Ors, um Organic Hair Restore Scalp Scrub. Never heard of this. She sent me a picture of it. She said you can, got, you can get this at your beauty supply store. I was so ready. I ordered it from, um, not Amazon, because them bitches wanted way too much. So I got it from eBay. Okay, and I got me two bottles of this, one for me and one for Nay. So this stuff comes with a toothbrush. You have to use your own baking soda and you just brush it and exfoliate your edges and wherever you need hair growth. And she said that this stuff works so well, has been working so well on her clients that they've grown their hair back. So I am definitely looking forward to this. If anyone has ever used this product, this is the Ors Original Root Stimulator Hair Restore Scalp Scrub. Please let me know your thoughts of it. I have not used it as of yet because for one, the instructions are very small. And I think with the time, with the old age that's setting in, I now need glasses for nearsighted. So these little letters and such are really getting hard for me to read. Now I find myself going like this and stuff. So I'm going to look up a video on how to um, mix this concoction up and what to do. My daughter, Nay, did uh, um, read it off to me, but I was so confused. So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to watch this on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that a bitch can find a video on how to use this. And if anyone has used this, Please, please, please tell me your thoughts of this. How did it work out for you? How do you use it? You know, do I really have to put the actual, um, it smells good though. Do I have to really put the, um, the baking soda and use a toothbrush in my hair? Because I'm just so scared that I might just brush away the little bit of hairs that I do have left. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, um, yes, that is what I've been up to. I'm excited about that, about my hair growing back. I don't really think there's anything else that I have to say to you guys. Make sure you check out me and Mumsy's Dollar Tree video for those that have been asking. That is um that has been up since Monday. Um, I don't know. I have really nothing much to talk about. I did put on a little bit of makeup today. So for those of you guys who um who get a little a little bit surprised and shocked that you guys see my freckles, y'all are like, um, Oh, I didn't know you had freckles. Why are you covering them up? Let me tell you something, bitches. I never cover up my freckles, okay? That's number one key. When you see me on camera, you see there's like a lot of light and stuff. So the light and, and stuff washes me out. So you're not going to see everything. But trust and believe me, if you were to see me in person and I've had all my makeup on, you would see all the freckles in the world with the makeup on. But the only thing that the foundation does is it may cover it up slightly. But it's not covering it up all the way. Like, trust me, they're dark. They're not going anywhere. And if I was to cover them up completely and you weren't to see them, damn, my face is definitely caked the fuck up. But yeah, so I do have on, um, I don't have on any foundation today. I actually have on my Iman, Iman, Imani, Iman, Iman facial press powder that I got like over a year ago from them. It's actually a really good color um, if you use it alone because I felt like it was like a jaundice kind of yellow, but it actually does work out good for me. So, 
And I don't know, bitches, I might just have to wear this. But I do have a little bit of the concealer under my eyes, which is the color yellow by LA Girls. And some brows and eyeliner and shit like that. But no foundation. And my cheeks are a little bit rosy, you know. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But other than that, um, yes, you guys, I guess we're going to get into this real talk because I do have a couple of them that are really long. And um, we're just going to get into this, okay? So if you have a real talk that you would like for me to discuss on here, then please go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And that's about it. So on that note, we're gonna get into this. Okay. All right, you guys, so let's get into this, all right? Hey, April, first I would like to say thank you in advance for considering this email as part of your segment. I love your videos and honest opinions. You can call me Aubrey. I'm 26. Two people involved, one by the name of Corey, the age of 33, and Gary, age 27. About me, I lived in Chicago and relocated to Texas four years ago due to a job promotion. When I first moved to Texas, I lived with my aunt for three months as my job at the time required a lot of travel. I didn't have any time to look for a place. Thereafter, I did find my own place. Life was good. I've been working in the healthcare field still since. Recently moved in with my mom to save some money. No kids, I own a car, normal adult stuff, you know. Corey was the first person I met in Texas. He showed me around Texas and taught me everything there is to know as far as places to go and how to navigate around the city. He has one child and the baby mother's not in the picture at all. Originally, we started off as friends. There was no pressure. When I met him, he wasn't working and he was a jailbird living with his mom. He would get jobs and work for a little while and then get fired. I overlooked it. That's how he wants to live his life fine. Not my problem and not my place to pass judgment. Eventually, as time went on, we got serious. Well, he did. I wasn't all the way in it. I'm young and doing me. I cheated and gave him an STD. He wasn't mad and stayed. My ex-boyfriend traveled to Texas unannounced. He had my address because he is who I was living with before I re relocated. We were broken up when I moved, and I thought we had an understanding we wasn't together. They got into an altercation, leaving Corey pistol with. Hold up. Let me back that the fuck up because I felt like I was just going a little bit too fast. Hold up. I cheated and gave him an STD. So she cheated on Corey and gave him an STD. He wasn't mad, and he stayed. My ex-boyfriend traveled to Texas unannounced. He had my address because he is whom I was living with before I relocated to Texas. We were broken up when I moved out, and I thought we had an understanding that we wasn't together, me and my ex-boyfriend. Corey and my ex got into an altercation, leaving Corey pistol-whipped. He still dealt with me even after that. I cheated again after that. He still stayed. I know what I did wasn't right, but it is what it is. Anyways, as the relationship went on, I determined he is not what I want in a man, nor, ha nor has he been providing me, uh, nor has he been providing for me. He buys me food and gives me gas when I ask for it, but anything else, it's a dub. He doesn't aspire to have a house or marriage, and when I talked to him about my concerns, he says, it's my fault we haven't discussed it because I haven't shown him anything serious about he and I's relationship, which is true, but why stay knowing I won't act right? But when I try to leave and let you be free, you won't allow it. He is very loyal and will not leave no matter what I do. We are still talking to this day. He has been working consistently since last year and still does not provide or talk of future plans. This isn't everything, but to give you an idea. Gary, I met in high school. We were boyfriend and girlfriend back then, which was short-lived because he relocated after six months of being at that school. He kept in contact on and off between that time he got married and had two children. Just recently, we reconnected on a serious level because he is now divorced and he came to me exactly one year after the divorce. 
After a week of talking, he booked his flight and was on his way to see me within a month. Hmm. Mind you, he lives in Chicago. So yes, I allowed him to come because it was a friendly basis and he is looking to relocate for his business. The demographic here is what he is looking for. So he came and we had a blast, super respectful and nice. He came one more time three months after. He showed me he's serious about us. We have talks of the future, etc. He graduates school in August and wants to move here to be with me. He knows about Corey and vice versa. So meaning Corey knows about him. Of course, Corey wasn't pleased with Gary visiting, but once again, he still stays. As time went on, me and Gary got extremely close and I was digging him. He bossed up my mental, financial thinking. He motivated me and a bunch of other things. Supports me on any decisions I make, etc. He is literally the perfect guy in my eyes. He's never given me a reason to doubt anything he says or does. Once again, this isn't everything but to give you just an idea. In closing, they say someone you just met could be good for you over a person you've been knowing for years. I tried to break things off for Corey to be with Gary, but Corey was not having it. He would blow up my phone, pop up at my house, constantly texting. It was too much. I would ignore him, but he would still find a way to contact me. Fake phone numbers, social media, etc. Eventually, I gave in and started talking to Corey again. I broke things off with Gary because I didn't want him in any of my drama, also known AKA not being able to get rid of Gary complete Corey, excuse me. I broke up with Corey because I didn't want get, um, I broke up with Gary because I didn't want him in any of my drama, AKA not being able to get rid of Corey completely. He completely backed off. I didn't have to say anything twice. He respected my decision. Gary and I still talk, but not like before. And he is still willing to be with me if I decide to. Whew. April, what do you think of this situation? Should I stay with Corey because he has been loyal and stay with me through all of my bullshit but doesn't provide, barely trust me, no talks of the future are shut, or should I cut him off? If so, how he will if so, how he will not leave me alone and will not stop until I give in. Or be with Gary because he has shown me nothing but love and respect. Help me boss up mentally, have meaningful conversations, etc. Also, once Corey saw how big of a threat Gary was. He all of a sudden wants to start talking about me and him getting a place and him starting his own business to make more money. He's an independent contractor. Currently, he wants to add on to that. And to me, it wasn't genuine because Gary came into the picture. This wasn't even a thought. OK, so Corey wasn't even thinking about bossing up until Gary came into the picture. I feel like with Corey, it'll take years to build what me and Gary could build in a year or less because mentally and financially, he surpasses Corey. Once again, thank you for considering a confused girl, Aubrey. Well, so first of all, let me just take a drink of water because Aubrey asked and wore me and dry mouthed me to the fullest. So, Aubrey to move to Texas, okay? Just to relocate, want to change your pace, want to change your lifestyle. She's 26, you know. It's good. Get out of Chicago. Get out of wherever you've been at and just relocate, see the world. Especially if you don't got no kids or if you even got kids, relocate, see the world, you know. Life is short. You got you to gotta find out what's out there for you. So she done did that. You know, she got her own place now. She, um, well, she lives with her mom just to save money, basically. Um, she got a car. She has a job. She works in the medical field. She met Corey, who was 33, I believe. Yes, Corey's 33. He was a jailbird. He had jobs on and off, you know, get fired, get another job, get fired, get another job. He don't really be talking about the future. You know, no future plans, no moving in, no marriage, no kids, no, none of that good stuff that a woman like to hear. All right. That's what we like to hear. However, Arby done went and cheated on the man. She done cheated on the man with God knows who, with who. But the thing is, Arby done cheated on Corey and gave him an STD. He still done stayed. Arby's ex-boyfriend then drove down from Chicago to Texas to come visit, you know, ex-boyfriend and her, him, her ex-boyfriend and Corey done got into some shit and poor Corey got pistol whipped and he still stayed. Aubrey didn't cheat on him multiple times, and this nigga still done fucking stayed. Aubrey didn't invite Gary, which was one of her childhood friends, to come visit and stay with her. You know what I'm saying? He didn't still found out about Gary, you know? 
They, they, he know they getting close and he still stay. Let me tell you something. First of all, it seemed like Aubrey liked Gary a little bit more, a whole lot fucking more because he more of a stand up man. He, he about his business. He about making his money. He about making moves. He's giving her this good conversation. You know what I'm saying? He's coming to visit her. He's talking about what he want with her, what she want with him. You know what I'm saying? She feel like with Gary, who was her childhood friend, who was 27 years old, a year older than her, they have a good future together. Okay. However, Gary has been demarried. It has two children. Gary has been married and has two children and is divorced. Now she's saying that Gary has come to her a year after his divorce. What was the divorce about? Because there's always two sides to every story. You don't know why Gary got divorced. You don't know if his wife divorced him because he's a, he's a pathological liar. You know what I'm saying? He broke. He's a woman beater. He's what, he's a lot of different things. Okay. There are reasons why people get divorced. They just don't say, well, you know what? I don't want to fucking be with them no more because I just don't like the way he wears his shirt. I don't like the socks he wears. I just don't like the way he snores. Okay. I don't like the way he fucks. All right. There's many reasons why people get divorced. They just don't up and say, I'm tired of looking at you. Okay. There's reasons why they tired of looking at the person. So Gary is divorced and he has two children. There's a reason why he was divorced. Okay. However, he's came to Aubrey a year after his divorce and got in contact with her. You know, they were dating in high school or school somewhat. And basically they're childhood friends. Okay. So they become serious. They talk on the phone. He still resides in Chicago. He's going to school. He's an entrepreneur. He feels like Texas is the demographics of where he wants to have his own business. And so he's selling, he's, he's basically selling himself to Aubrey of saying, this is what he wants to do. This is what he wants to do. And then we have Corey who Aubrey met when she moved to Texas, who's 33. He doesn't have really anything too strong going for him. He's a jailbird. I mean, I'm saying there's nothing wrong with a jailbird. Okay. They have potential too. But, um, uh, what I'm saying is, you know, he lives with his mom. There's nothing wrong with that. I guess I'm not really sure, but Listen, he lives with his mom. He has um, a child. The baby mama is not in the picture. Now, when she said the baby mama is not in the picture, I'm not sure if the child lives with Corey and the baby mama is not in the picture for the kid. And you know what I'm saying? Or the baby mom is not in the picture at all in Corey's life. I'm thinking it's probably the baby mother is not in the picture of Corey's life, but takes care of the baby. You know what I'm saying? So basically, you know, Corey's on and off with jobs. He'll get a job and then he'll lose it. He'll, but he'll get another job. Okay. At least he gets another job. Some men don't even bother to do that. And the only thing he is not, he's not communicating with her about their future. Like meaning we're going to have some kids. We're going to have a business together. We're going to do this. We're going to move in and, and blah, blah, blah. And he also seems like to me, he's lacking, he's lacking self-confidence because if a bitch keep constantly cheating on you and you finding out about it and she inviting niggas that she used to fuck with down to Texas to fucking chill with her and they getting close. Okay. And then you getting pistol with by her exes. Why the fuck is you still staying? Seems like he's lacking self-confidence. I mean, I understand Corey, you're 33 years old, you a jailbird or whatever. It doesn't even matter what the fuck you are. I'm sorry, but if I just got pistol whipped by your ex and then you keep cheating on me and you done gave me an STD and you keep cheating on me, why the fuck would I stay with you? I don't give a fuck if my self-confidence is like this. Aubrey, your pussy ain't that motherfucking good, all right? There's a whole lot of other pussy out there that I could get instead of fucking with you if I was Corey. You know what I'm saying? Not saying as April standpoint, but if I were Corey, bitch, I would have been left your ass. And then it's like he won't let her go. So I'm trying to figure out, does Corey have some type of hidden agenda or does he really really lack self-confidence okay because there's no way that anyone should allow a person that they're in a relationship dog them out like this like okay there are people do cheat on one another and i'm not justifying it i'm not saying that it is um like you know justifiable or you know, it's okay, but people do get cheated on. And if you take the person back and you talk to them and you take it back, I mean, you take them back, then okay, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? As long as they don't continuously do it to you. But in Aubrey's case, she is constantly cheating on Corey, but he just doesn't seem to just care. So I don't know that she got him under some type of spell. She must got like the best coochie in the world. Okay. But I feel like he really lacks self-confidence, you know what I'm saying? And it's sad because 
He's a man. Get some motherfucking balls, Corey. Get some fucking balls. Now, here's the thing that Arby wants to know. She's in a relationship with the both of them. Not right now, but she was. So she basically called it off with Gary, who is still in Chicago, because she just seems like she cannot break it off with Corey. You know, Corey is not trying to leave her. He'll pop up. He'll call her from strange numbers. He, he'll just do whatever to get Aubrey back in his life. And that's sweet and everything, but God damn, nigga, grow some balls. Corey, if you watch and grow some balls. But, you know, she's trying to figure out what should she do? Should she just, like, totally break it up with Corey so that she could be with Gary? Who? What should she do? What what should she do about the situation? Me personally, um, let me tell you something. She wants to know who she should be with. Should she be with Gary, who doesn't, um, who has everything going for himself? Meaning, he's talking about their future together. He is talking about his business endeavors. He is bossing her up mentally and financially. He is just basically a stand-up kind of guy. Or and and he wants to move to Texas when he graduates, I think, I do believe, in August. Or should she stick with Corey, who basically um, doesn't really have much going for himself? You know, um, he doesn't want to get rid of her, though. He doesn't want to let her go. Um, he's been incarcerated. Um, he is a self-contractor, you know what I'm saying? So he does do jobs, and he wants to better himself. She says he wants to better himself now because Gary's in the picture. Let me tell you something. What would I do in this situation? Because that's what she asked me. What would I do in this situation? Like, I feel like with Corey, it'll take years to build what me and Gary could build in a year or less because mentally and financially, he surpasses Corey. Now, first of all, Aubrey, a confused girl, let me tell you something. If you're a female, a woman, a grown ass woman, you shouldn't need no man to boss you the fuck up. Okay. You shouldn't need a man to boss you up mentally and financially. If you're a grown woman and you on your P's and Q's and you doing what the fuck you need to do, then you should be able to do this shit on your own. You don't need Gary who surpasses Corey to boss you the fuck up. Okay. Now, I'm a grown woman and I don't need nobody to boss me up to for me to do what I need to do. I have my own self within to boss me the fuck up because I know a bitch don't like to sleep on the street. I know this. I've never slept on the street. However, um, I don't want to sleep on a motherfucking street. Okay. I like nice things. It don't have to be the best of things, but I like things. Okay. I like fucking things. All right. Also, I feel like this, like, you, you, you have been speaking to Gary over the phone. He's come to visit you twice. Within these time frames of visiting you twice, you have spoken with him about your about his future endeavors, and he's over the phone with you talking about his future with you, y'all living together, et cetera, et cetera. Let me tell you something. Like I said a few minutes ago, Gary has been selling himself to you. He is advertising himself to you, okay? Meaning... This nigga could be telling you every fucking thing under the sun. He could be telling you he's going to school. Do you really know if he's going to school? Are you sitting in class with him? Do you see his fucking school class schedule? Like, I'm trying to figure this the fuck out. Like, you don't know what the fuck Gary could possibly be doing. And some things are just like hidden smoke. It's some things are they just try to blow smoke up your ass. This is what men do in general. And I'm not bashing men. Women do the same shit too. But... Sometimes people tell you what the fuck you want to hear because they want to get in good with you. Why do you think Gary would come to you if he didn't have a job and he didn't have schooling? This nigga could be sitting on the couch, sleeping on the couch at his mom's house for all the fuck you know, okay? And he could be sitting there talking about, yeah, girl, I'm going to school for this and this and that. And I got these good job plans and I got this. Meanwhile, he's flipping burgers at motherfucking McDonald's, sleeping on his mother's couch. And she talking about, get the fuck up, Gary, and wash the goddamn dishes. All right. This is what the fuck Gary could be telling you. And meanwhile, he's coming out here and, um, He's coming out to Texas wanting to shout you out and wanting to chill with you and kick it with you. And he's, he's talking about future plans and stuff and shit like that with you because the nigga don't want to sleep on his mama couch no more. I'm just saying. 
you don't really know what somebody's true agenda is. He could be he could be telling you, Gary could be telling you all of this shit till he blew in the face. Meanwhile, you on the other side of the world in Texas thinking about, oh, Gary loves me. I'm in heaven, heaven, because Gary loves me. Meanwhile, that nigga got other bitches in Chicago fucking them, sleeping on his mama couch or whoever couch they will allow him to sleep on, flipping burgers at McDonald's, and then next week he got another job at Subway because he couldn't hold that down. The job he really wanted was at Walmart, and that didn't work out for him, okay? Let me tell you something, honey. This nigga could tell you anything until he's blue in the face, till you blue in the face, until you fucking pass out from breathing. You cannot bank your fucking financial statement and your future plans on somebody who does not live in the same state as you and you really don't know you don't know what his bank account look like you just don't motherfucking know okay so you telling me who should you be with i don't think you should be with neither one of them motherfuckers Corey, listen I feel sorry for Corey because his heart is where his heart is at, which is being stomped all over on the ground because you are stomping all over that poor guy's heart. And that's fucked up because you know why? If that were you, you definitely wouldn't like it to be done to you. You wouldn't have liked it if Corey came back and gave you an STD. You wouldn't like it if he got caught cheating on you multiple times. You wouldn't like it if his girlfriend came through and beat your motherfucking ass. His ex-girlfriend came through and beat your ass. And you damn sure wouldn't like it if he invited somebody from your old his old state to come chill with him and go get close and show him the town. And then you talking. You wouldn't like none of that shit, Arby. So don't do what you wouldn't like being done to you. Do unto others as you would want being done to you. That is the old fucking saying. What I really think you need to do is relocate your motherfucking mind, bitch. Okay? Relocate your motherfucking mind. Because it seems like you done got caught up in the sauce of Texas and all that it has to offer, okay? And then you're going back to men from Chicago and you allowing them to fucking fill your head up with bullshit dreams that could not be even that they may be fucking dreams, may be false advertisement because he's selling himself to you. And some shit is just too good to be true. Now I'm not knocking brother, but I, what I'm trying to tell you is girlfriend, put your pump, your motherfucking brakes real quick, bitch. Pump your motherfucking brakes real quick. Okay. Because you jump it out of the flame and into the fire. All right. You jump it from one to the next. What you need to just do is stay in the middle, meaning stay at your mama house, get your shit together and leave the both of them fuck alone. You got crazy Corey over here. Okay. We're going to call him crazy Corey because he is, he's, he's fucking in love. You know what I'm saying? He don't know what the fucking do. He got this woman walking all over, uh, all over him. Um, getting beat the fuck up. Let me tell you something. Uh, let me tell you something. As a man, if I had a man that was like that, I wouldn't even want to fuck with him because that means you straight up pussy. And who want to be fucking, um, who want to deal with some man who's pussy? Like it's one thing when you love somebody, but he, you just totally disrespecting him and he ain't got no fucking self-confidence. He ain't got no pride. He, he ain't got none of that shit. You just stripped him of all his motherfucking pride. And I'm not saying that that's cool. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, but what I'm trying to say is for one, Aubrey, you wouldn't like that shit if it was done to you. you do all the shit that you're doing to Corey, you would not like that shit if it's done to you. And in my aspect, I think that you really need to leave him alone because all you're doing is fucking him up in the, in my, in the mind. You fucking his brain. You fucking him mentally up. You know what I'm saying? You is just violating his motherfucking mind. And that's fucked up because, like I said, you wouldn't like that shit if it were you. Had that been me and my man did that to me. bitch. He would have been long gone. You gave him an STD. So you cheated on him. And on top of that, you cheated on him without using protection. And then you came back and gave it to him. That That's fucking low. That's like, that's really low. And, but who am I to judge people? But I'm going to just say as a woman's part standpoint, and that's just as a human being with all these diseases going on out there, why the fuck would you cheat on him with somebody that you barely even knew? Because if you, if you knew him like that, then you wouldn't have caught an STD. I don't even know who you slept with, but you cheated on him. Obviously the person wasn't that clean because they was fucking other bitches too. So you weren't the only one that he was fucking because he gave you the disease and then you brought it back to Corey. You brought it that shit back to crazy Corey. And then he got an STD and he still fucked with you and then got pistol whipped and still fucked with you. Let me tell you something. I would draw the line at the pistol whipping thing. 
that's where I'm drawing the motherfucking line at. Now, you done gave me the STD. I know shit happens. It's a mistake. But listen. You got your ex coming here. And he done pistol with me. I got to go. Bitch, I don't know who else you're going to have behind your back next. But I have not fucking with you. But that's why I'm saying he crazy Corey. Because this nigga don't got no motherfucking noodles. Now, here's one. Here's the thing. Like I said, Gary could be blowing smoke up your ass and everything that he's saying to you is just a bunch of bullshit because, you know, men do tell women things that they think we want to hear to get in good with us and be like, oh, I love him. Oh. That's what the fuck they do. So if I was you, I'd be on my P's and Q's. You know, if you really do like him, then that's cool. But handle him with a long motherfucking spoon, okay? Meaning, okay, let me just check you out. I'm going to feel you out. Let me pop up there in Chicago and see what it's really all about. But Corey, crazy Corey... This nigga's going to snap on you any day now. Like, I'm not saying any day like tomorrow, next week, but Crazy Corey is going to bug the fuck out one day and he's just going to snap. You know what I'm saying? He's going to lose it mentally and then he's not going to want to just be Crazy Corey. He's going to be even crazier, Corey. Meaning, he's going to get tired of your punk ass cheating on him and he is going to let all that shit marinate because that shit is probably marinating right now, marinating. And then he's going to snap and then he might do something to you that you totally regret. So I think that Crazy Corey is crazy for real. And that you need to definitely leave him the fuck alone. Okay? Like me, I feel like this. I don't want fuck with nobody that's pussy. If you are allowing yourself to get beat up, um, cheated on, um, you've gotten diseases from a person, it is time that he needs to evaluate himself. He has no self-worth. And why would you want to be with anybody that has no self-worth? Now you, Aubrey, listen. I'm not saying you seem like a good girl. I'm not saying you seem like a bad girl. I don't really know you personally. However, from what you have told me, I do know that this is this about you. That you need to reevaluate what you want in life, okay? Meaning, if you think that some man is going to boss you up, then sweetheart, you have another thing coming. Because no woman should ever need a man to feel to make her feel like she's um, worthy, to make her feel like she can do something, to make her feel like her finances are straight. Because that same man that could boss you up can take it all from you, bitch. And then where do you left with nothing? Okay? So therefore, my my number one thing is get your own shit, bitch. Get your own shit. Get your own place, okay? Because you're staying with your mother to save money. That's cool, but get your own place. If you really want to feel like you bossed the fuck up, then get your own shit, okay? Because that's the number one rule if you want to feel bossed the fuck up. Move out of your mama's house and stop worrying about saving money and be a boss, bitch, and move out of your mama's house and boss the fuck up mentally and financially and worry about what Aubrey needs to do. You don't need no man to fucking get up in your head and make you feel like, oh, okay. Because from what... What I'm hearing or reading from your email, it just seems like you're using him as well. Meaning, because Gary seems Gary seems like he's got it going on, you want to be with him because you can be ahead in a year. That's you trying to eat off of somebody else. Bitch, eat off your own motherfucking plate. You know what I'm saying? Eat off your own plate and be with Aubrey. Because, sweetheart, you don't need to be with neither one of them. You don't know what Gary is and who Gary really is. And Corey's ass is probably going to snap any day now. And then if he does, then I, girl, you better hide for the hills, run for the hills, take cover, whatever the fuck you need to do. Do that shit, okay? Because both of them motherfuckers seem a little bit off, if you ask me. I'm just saying. Y'all give her y'all opinions and shit and let her know. What y'all feel about the situation. But me personally, I just think that how she's done Corey crazy Corey is dead ass wrong. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just dead ass wrong. So I would definitely um, um I would definitely leave your opinions below. I was reading this freaking email real quick. It says, time is running out on special offers for Maggie. My dog's name is not Maggie anymore. It's motherfucking Sugar, okay? It's just weird because her name is Sugar. The the the, the adoption agency, the shelter where I got her from, said her name was Maggie. And then when I got home like and looked at her papers the next day, it said, taken from Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, dog such and such date of birth, name Sugar. 
So where did they get her name being Maggie? I just don't fucking know. Because it says all over her paperwork that her name is fucking Sugar. Okay? So, and then I started calling her Sugar, and she fucking re replied to that shit. So, I don't know. Okay? So, now let's get on to the next, the next real talk, because this one is just as long. Okay? Hi, April. I'm really going through it. I've been married since July of 2017. Second marriage for me was a widower and third marriage for him. And ever since I met this man, he's been good to us. Good days and bad days, of course. We don't live with each other. He lives in New York. I live in New Jersey. He offered me and my children to move in a house him and his ex-wife own still to this day. I said, hell no. We've known each other for three years and engaged for a year and got married. I have four children, ages 6 through 19, all living at home with me. He has two children and one teenager, 12 years old, female girl. Um, oh, excuse me. He has two adult children and one teenager, um, which is a 12-year-old female girl. My kids like him. They get along with him. They like to talk to him. He has everybody's phone numbers. He communicates with them all the time. He's even offered to buy my daughter her first car, but I have no relationship with his children. I don't have their phone numbers to call them. He says in due time, we will all get together and we'll live together in due time. But in due time has not come soon enough. Not to mention that he has a great job that he's been at for 25 years and he lives in his mother's basement. Not only is that the problem, but the main problem is the sex is horrible. I tried telling him about it. I tried asking him to go seek some help for it. I told him that he might have a dysfunction, but he says that it's because we don't live together. And when we do get together, he shoots off and he gets so excited and he skyrockets and he's so happy to see me that it happens so fast. So basically he just comes real quick. I never get to climax. I never get to have an orgasm. He doesn't foreplay. He doesn't get me in the mood. It's so bad that I'm not even turned on anymore. He doesn't listen. And when I tried to teach him how to pleasure me, he said it was weird. There's a 12 year difference between me and him. I am 39. He is 51. When we first met, I loved his charm. He's such a gentleman. Sex was okay, but it just is nothing anymore. I told him if he did not go get help for the situation that I would consider maybe cheating because we only have sex once a month and we do have sexy just sticks. And we do have sexy just sticks it in. And Oh, and when we do have sex, he just sticks it in and does his thing and gets up. And then I get upset and I start to get really upset. He told me the other day to go ahead and cheat and find you a black man that can take care of you and all your children. What color is this? For him. Because nobody else is going to want you or do for you like I do. And introduce your children to their new father because they have so many. Now, mind you, April, he, has, he, ha he is on his third wife and he has three children to two different women. I have four children, three different babies that I only have one more than him. So why even come out of your mouth and talk to your wife that way? My question is to you, April, is what should I do? Because this man, he was so charming in the beginning and he does a lot for us, but I never asked him for anything. And I don't think that I deserve this just for saying that the sex is bad. Because if the sex was bad with me, he would cheat on me. I told him that we need counseling. He says, no, I'm not telling nobody my business. And then I said, I said, what about a divorce? He said, I'm never leaving you. This is the most one-sided marriage relationship I've ever been in my life. One-sided re marriage relationship I've ever been in in my life. P.S. We've talked about these issues a lot. I just want to know, should I stay or should I go? Please help. Thanks. Always love your channel so much. Okay, so... We're going to call her Keisha. I don't like that name so much. We're going to call her, we're going to call her Kiki. Okay. So Kiki is cool. So Kiki is married to this man. Okay. And Kiki has been married to this man for like, how long? Like a year or, or maybe more than a year. They've been engaged. They, she's known him for like three years. This is her second marriage because her, her other husband, she's a widower and it's his third marriage. Um, you know, 
He lives in New York. She lives in New Jersey. He lives in his mom's basement. Um, she has four children, the ages of 6 through 19. He has two adult children and one teenager. Now, basically, when Kiki goes and sees her husband, we're we going to just call him Michael. You know, when they have sex, they only see each other once a month. So when they do have sex, he's just like, he he sticks it in uh, 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 and just explodes. It didn't. It's just that quick, okay? Now, mind you, she's 39, he's 51, so he don't even put no foreplay. He don't he don't put no type of initiative into the shit. And she don't get to come. She don't probably even get to get, her. probably her cooch don't even get to get wet, all right? Because I'm saying, if you ain't being aroused, then how the fuck is your stuff getting wet? So she probably don't even get to get aroused. She, her coochie probably dry as a motherfucker. He probably lubricates that shit with some baby oil, sticks it in, pops off, poom, poom, poom does a couple of strokes and then just gets off and goes to sleep. That's kind of fucked up. She's already tried to talk to him about it. He don't want to tell nobody his business. He's telling her, well, you can go ahead and cheat them, find you a black man. So I'm thinking, is this man not black? Because why else, what, why would another black man say that about another black man? So I'm thinking that this dude is not black at all. I'm not really sure what the fuck his race is. It shouldn't even matter. The, the thing is this, he's telling her like, you know, go ahead and try to find somebody else. Um, see if they want you and all your kids. Um, see if they take care of you. Go introduce your kids to their new father. All because of the sex is whack, okay? She's told him about his whack-ass sex, and he's got a ha he's having a fit. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. First of all, if you're married to somebody, you should not be living in separate houses with each other. I mean, I know shit happens, but y'all never lived together in the first place, so why even bother getting married? Now, I know y'all probably like, well, bitch, you married. I'm not actually i'm divorced okay but he is the love of my life so in reality and in my mind i call him my husband still because that's how i feel about him and one day soon we will be remarried again okay but here's the thing I wouldn't marry somebody if they lived in another state and I didn't live with them. Like, because then what is that? Like, how y'all even, like, how is that working? And then you just said that, you know, he's offered you and your kids to come live in a house. But then you just told me he lives in his mother's basement. So I'm like really, really confused because you said that he lives in his mother's basement. He offered me and my children to move in a house. Him and his ex-wife own still to this day. Okay, so he's offered you and your children to move in a house that him and his ex-wife still own to this day. Him and his ex-wife own the house. They don't live in a house together. They own that shit, okay? But he lives in his mother's basement. I'm not understanding why does he live in his mother's basement if he owns a house with his ex-wife? So is nobody living in that house? Um, and, and on top of that, like... Why can't he come live with you guys? Okay. Why can't he come live with you? He checks on you. He calls you. He checks on the kids. I'm just so fucking confused. And then when you do see him, which is only once a month, I'm still trying to figure out why do you guys get to see each other only once a month? Because New Jersey and New York are neighboring states. They're like really close. You can get to them in, in, in the blink of an eye. But so when you guys see one another, you guys have sex, and he just skyrockets and explodes. Now, let me tell you something. If he can't take the constructive criticism about his whack-ass dick, then there's a problem. There's an issue, okay? For one, when we're about to have sex, you ain't about to just hop on me and roll over and stick it in. Because what the fuck is that supposed to do for me? Um, but if y'all can't come to terms and work together on this, like he's not even trying to meet you halfway. You understand what I'm saying? You trying to tell this man how to please you and he ain't even trying to hear you. He thinks that it's weird to hear that. He thinks that it's weird to just talk about having sex, but it ain't weird to tell you that your, your dick is whack. Like if you was to tell me my, my shit was whack, I would definitely feel like some type of way. And if you was to try to tell me what well, this would make me feel better, if you would do this, I would definitely be willing to listen only because bitch, I don't want you, um, to keep complaining about the shit and then go look elsewhere but if he's not willing to work on that then maybe that's not the person that you are supposed
supposed to be with, okay? For one, y'all don't even live in the same household. For two, he's talking about where you can go find you a black a black husband or a black man to cheat on with. That seemed like some type of racial fucking um, remark. I'm not sure what kind of, what he is, if he's white, if he's Puerto Rican, whatever. But I just don't think that other black men would say that about another black man. So that's where I'm starting to feel like, is this man even a black man for saying that? Because like... Who says something like, oh, well, you could just go find you a black man to cheat on with and tell your your kids that they this is their new father? Like, he's petty. To me, in my mind, this 51-year-old man is petty, and what he's trying to do is be very, very controlling. He lived in the basement of his mother's house. What is with all these men that live with their motherfucking mothers in this fucking email? Real talk this week. Like, seriously, let me tell you something. When you're 51 years old, bitch, you need to be living on your own, not living in your mama's basement. That right there is a red flag, a strike me as a fucking problem, issue, 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 issue. I cannot fuck with you if you're living in your mama's basement, okay? I can't. And then on top of that, y'all done got married. Y'all been engaged you knew him for three four years and y'all got engaged and then got married right away let me tell you something if y'all didn't have that shit si all the way situated of who was gonna live where and then y'all still living separate then there was no need for y'all to get fucking married that right there was just some dumb shit that was a plot to fucking a plot and a ploy to fucking control your fucking black ass bitch okay so what if you have four kids to three different baby daddies so motherfucking well i got five kids to four different motherfuckers who gives a shit all right who gives a shit? This is the thing that I don't understand with people. They be like, oh, she got three kids to three different baby fathers. So fucking what? All right? Why? So because she had one kid, she's supposed to stay with the loser, the first loser, and be with him? Okay, no, nah, bitch. You leave that motherfucker alone and go on about your business. Find happiness elsewhere. And if you end up getting pregnant, you get pregnant, you have another baby with somebody else, and y'all living happily every after, and then he start acting the fuck up, which you supposed to stay with him too? And because y'all got a kid together? Nah, bitch. You leave that motherfucker alone too. All right, this is this is how the fucking cycle happens. This is what the fucking ha happens for some people. Okay, I don't know about others, but some people just that's how life is. But that doesn't make you the person you are. Okay, because you got this kid and that kid to whoever, it doesn't make you who you are. My mom has two kids to two different people. My dad has fucking three kids, four kids to four different people. So fucking what? All right, it's what it is. It is what it is. My dad got divorced. He got married to my mom, got divorced. He got married to another lady, got divorced. He got married to another lady, got divorced. There, bam. And then he started dating some little fucking young girl um, that was like younger than me and had a kid with her and got divorced or, or separated. Same shit, okay? Same shit. So what the fuck? You supposed to just not have kids anymore because you left somebody alone? No, it's just how it is. However, you know what I'm saying? Kiki... Your marriage is like a strange, like it's a strange marriage. It's a strange, like, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? You got whack. Let me tell you something this much. Like sex isn't everything, but don't nobody want to be with somebody who got some whack dick, like straight up. Like, I'm sorry. I would never want to be with anybody that had whack dick. Okay. Um, I've, I've been there, done that. And that's not a good feeling to be with somebody who's got some whack ass dick. Like, You'd be like, okay, I hope they're going to sleep tonight. Let me, get, let me get some baby oil and play with my own stuff because this nigga got some whack ass dick. So, you know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to be with somebody. Um, nobody wants to be with somebody like who has, like, whack dick. Like, that's just a turn off. And especially if you're not even trying to meet me halfway and please, please me. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, like... You trying to have a conversation with the man about how his dick is not that great, how his sex is not that great, how he can please you and better the sex game. And he's not even trying to hear you. He's trying to control you. He's 51 years old, sweetheart. He is already set in his fucking ways. It's, and you guys are set in your ways with this marriage. And it's sad to say the least. But in my opinion, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even continue on with this shit. Especially with the black man remark and all of this petty shit. He seems like a petty old fucking man. Regardless of his... His race he seems petty and if he can't please you sexually then listen you and you are going to end up cheating and if you can't have a conversation with somebody and you cannot communicate with some somebody then I feel like you know what then maybe that you know what you need to go your way and he needs to go his way and it's sad to say that because it is a marriage but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? You have to come into some type of communication. You guys have to communicate with each other. You guys have to agree to disagree. This motherfucker ain't even agreeing to disagree on anything. He don't give a fuck if his sex is whack. As long as he gets some pussy and he's coming on, 
on top with it, he good with that. Let me tell you something. That shit was not going to last forever, sweetheart. And if you get mad and you get angry, I can only imagine how you're going to feel in the near future to come. So if I were you, if he can't have a conversation with you and he is not willing to please you sexually, then I can only imagine how he ain't willing to please you in other aspects of life in this marriage as well. And plus, he live at home with his mama. Let that motherfucker stay at home with his mama. Call it a loss, chuck it up, sweetheart, and keep it pushing. Because you're still young, you can definitely find love, and you can definitely find somebody that got a good motherfucking sex game and it could put it down. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? I know where the fuck I belong in life, okay? I mean, I know who I'm supposed to be with, and it ain't because he got good sex, because he damn sure does, okay? But I know where my heart is at, and this is who I love, and he pleases me in every single way. You know, yeah, we've had our faults, and we've had our issues in our marriage before, and he's, like, a totally different person. Like, I'm so proud of my husband, like, totally, totally, totally proud of him. Like, I, I just can't imagine how proud. I just can't imagine. I just, I just can't imagine myself being without him, but... You guys, I'm like really, really proud of him, of the person that he's become. And, you know, like I'm glad that we are still able to, we were still able to communicate and, and mend things with one another. The part that sucks is the part that, you know, we got divorced. Um, that was me doing, that was my doing, not his. Because um, he didn't even sign the papers. The judge just did put it in default. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm very proud of him, of the person he's become. But, you know, like, there there are so many different marriages out there that have so many different problems. And, like, but the main key to any marriage is, like, communication. And if you can't communicate with the person and you're not willing to meet the person halfway and you're not willing to work with the person and, and make them happy, then, then it's not going to work at all. You know what I'm saying? It's just definitely not going to work at all. So I just feel like, you know, for you, Kiki, you know, you tried and maybe he said some good things that made you feel like a like in a better place and especially the fact that when someone takes care of your children and acknowledges them that like is like that is just right there it's pulling at your heartstrings but once you say mean things and you start being petty it just lets me see what type of person you really really are so with that i would just definitely feed him with a long spoon and just keep it pushing you know what i'm saying just keep it pushing so yes you guys let me see the next one my freaking Waist training is so fucking tight on me right now. I feel like just screaming. Ugh. Okay, so this one right here is short. And it's just really weird because it talks about how many kids a person has. And then also Texas. But this is a really short one. Um, hey, April. First, let me say thank you for keeping it real. I love your channel. So I watched one of your videos and you were upset talking about how many kids you have and how many fathers there are. And in that video, I could really relate. Um, I'm not really upset about how many kids I have and how many baby fathers I have. I've never been upset about that. I'm probably upset about the fact that there are a bunch of assholes, except for my husband, um, who is the father of my last two children. But he, biologically, he is. But he is the father of all of them, like, you know through marriage and just he's raised all of them so the only thing that i could be upset with is that i picked a bunch of deadbeats for baby fathers like the other three you know what i'm saying but it is what it is um but you know so here's my dilemma i have three kids ages 20 13 and one they all have different fathers my oldest does not have any type of communication with her dad my 13 year old father is involved and we were married um 15 years and now divorced for four years and my one-year-old, her father, lives three minutes away, but he is so selfish to see her when it's convenient for him. I am 38, the only children, the only child, and I'm 38 years old, and I'm the only child. And the only person I was close with was my mother, and she passed away last year unexpectedly. I do apologize about that, honey. I'm so sorry. Um, I can understand because I'm really close to my mom. Now I'm at the point where I want a change. So I'm thinking of quitting my job, packing my things, and moving to Texas. I have a cousin there, and she's offered her home to me until I'm able to get on my feet. I know you packed up and left. My, what advice do you have? I'm scared as hell. My thought was save as much as I can, find a job when I get there, and go from there. I don't know. I hope all this made sense because I tend to ramble a lot, laugh out loud. What are your thoughts? Thank you for taking the time to read um, and reply. Any advice? So um, she didn't leave her name, so we'll just call her Shelby. So Shelby is 38 years old. She has three children, ages 20, 13, and one years old. And she is thinking of packing up and leaving and moving to Texas. Each one of her 
children have different fathers. Her one-year-old has a father who lives three uh, three minutes away and doesn't pay this ch um, child any bit of attention. The 15-year-old, um, the 13-year-old, um, their father, her father, his father is um, is involved, but they're divorced. And the 20-year-old, she doesn't have any type of communication with the father at all. So she wants to know. What should she do? Should she just pack up and leave? Her cousin is offering her a home to stay in until she gets on her feet. She says that she doesn't know what to do. She's scared as hell. She thinks she should save up and just, you know, save as much as she can and then finds a job. And there you have it. That's that's what the fuck I did. Like, okay. So, unfortunately, I didn't have anybody in Arizona to offer me a place to stay until I was able to get on my feet. I didn't have anyone here. I didn't know anyone here. So, I had to come here on my own and find somewhere to live. I'm like, I flew out and I just came back to New York and then I found somewhere to live. But, um, I did pack my stuff up, but I just didn't pack up and leave. Um, I decided back in February that I was going to move to Arizona. So, I had from February to July... And that's when I left. But I did save up every last bit of coins that I made um, from my at-home job um, when I was working for Arise. And also from any wig sales and affiliate monies that I had. And how I did that was um, I froze my bank account. So I was able to put money into the bank account, but I wasn't able to take it out. You know what I'm saying? So I basically lived off very little for every few weeks. You know what I'm saying? And I just, just kept stacking my money. I did the same thing with my income tax refund. When I got my income tax refund, it went into my bank account and my bank account was frozen. So if I did want to, um, say, withdraw any money, I had to go to the bank and I had to sign papers and I had to meet with someone. So that was just doing the most. So I didn't do that. I just kept, you know, putting more money and more money into my bank. You know, I could always put money into my bank. I just couldn't take it out, which was great. And you can always request someone, to, you can always request them to freeze your bank account. And that's what helped me save all my money. Plus, um, every little bit of thing that I didn't need, I either sold it or I got rid of it just to make the move a lot less on moving expenses as well as just carrying extra stuff with me so those are that is one thing that i did and let me tell you something i was scared too girl i mean like listen i drove all the way from new york to arizona like with just me and my children and i was the only driver and me my children and god rest his soul my dog coco at the time and I was, you know what, I, was, I wasn't I was scared to move here. I was just scared of that long journey to drive here. But, you know what I'm saying, I had to do this. In my mind, it's like, April, you're going to be stagnated in this boring-ass town of Schenectady, New York. Or are you going to go out there and see what the world is really like? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've had people doubting me and telling me, don't go, don't go. You're stupid for leaving. You'll be back. Nah, I, if I leave, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back there. Okay. And it's like, don't leave, don't leave. And a part of me was like, you know what? I should just stay. And then that part of me was like, you know what? You can't knock something until you try it. You can't sit there and say could have, would have, and should have. Give it a chance. We all going to be scared of change. Change is a big word. Okay. Whether you know it or not, change is a huge word. Okay. I don't really like change in general. Like when I got a new computer, I didn't like the change. When fucking windows came out with their windows, Vista and all of that shit and XP. I didn't like that shit. I was not trying to go there. I didn't want to. I kept having the old windows installed on my any new computers that I had. When I got an Apple computer, I fucking cried and was frustrated because I couldn't get it and I didn't want to I didn't want to change, but I figured it out. When I moved here at first, I was so upset. I wasn't upset, but at first I was depressed and then I was um I wasn't really depressed, but I was a little bit homesick because I didn't know my way around, but over time it grew on me. In this place, I love it to death and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm so glad that I was able to change my life and I was able to bring my children from where they live at to here to make them a better life. So change is a big fucking word, whether you think it is or not. And it is scary. It is scary to move somewhere where you have never lived. It is scary to move somewhere where you don't much, don't know much about, but get this, you eventually will know a whole lot about that place. You know what I'm saying? You're not the only one that has done this, honey. We have all, there are many of us who have moved out and then moved out and moved on to other states. You know what I'm saying? 
this is a part of life and it is a scary thought, but I guarantee you, once you have made that change and you made that relocation, you'll look at yourself and you'll be like, I don't even know why I was scared. I don't even know why I was not, why I was hesitant on going. That's how I'll be looking at myself. And then when I tell people like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you couldn't drag me out of Arizona. I ain't never going back. Like when I left, um, when I left New York in um, January, like last month to come back home, you know, when I was on my vacation, you know, we was at the airport. Me and my husband and the lady, um, the, the the lady who was giving me my ticket, she was like, um, you know, oh, where are you going? You go, oh, you're going to Phoenix. She's like, oh, I wish I was going with you. She said, oh, I can't stand it here because he was in Schenectady. And I was like, oh, me too. That's why I left. Oh, you live out there? And I was like, yep. And um, she was like, oh, and she, she, and I was like, you know, basically I was like, I can't wait till my husband come out there. And she was like, oh, this is, he, this is your husband. Well, why don't you move back? I was like, and there's not, there's no way in the chance of on God's green earth that I'll ever move back here. Okay. So I was so happy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I never thought that I would say that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm so happy to leave. And like, you know, I'm not from Schenectady, New York. I'm from Queens. I'm, I'm from New York city. I'm a Queens girl. And for me to live in Schenectady was like really hard on me because I did miss New York city, but it was more affordable for me, but it was a Debbie downer all the time. And it was very depressing and gloomy and was nothing popping there. Like nothing was going on. I would rather have moved back to New York city, but I really couldn't afford it like that. But moving here to Arizona has been the best thing that I have ever done. Like Honestly, like, I don't think that I would have moved here if me and my husband would not have had that, like, that big fallout. We, we had, like, this big fight, you know, because, you know, he was drinking at the time. Um, back then he was, he was, he was, he was drinking. Um, and I, I don't think I would have moved here. So things happen for a reason. And I'm, I'm glad that I did move here because it gave me the opportunity to better not only my life, but my children's life and to be able to see another part of the world. Like, you don't want to be stuck in one place just because you were born and raised there doesn't mean that you have to stay there. You know what I'm saying? You need to venture out. And I'm pretty sure that your children will like a different life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so for me, I love it here. And of course, I was really scared at first when I moved here because I didn't really know anywhere. I didn't know how to get from the grocery store to my house. It took me like a, a while to figure out how to get from the grocery store to my house, which is down the street. But this housing development where I live at because I live in Garden Lakes you know what I'm saying and it's like houses nothing but houses and it's a community but it was so many turns I couldn't figure it out but I would just constantly use my GPS or my phone you know the maps on here so like and I still do use the map on my phone you know what I'm saying but over time, you have been, you, you get accustomed to going from the same place to the same place to the same place. And it, it's not scary anymore. And for me, it's not scary anymore. Sometimes it gets a little bit scary to me when I'm going somewhere that I don't know. Only because people out here don't know how to motherfucking drive for shit, okay? They are the ones that fuck with my heart, okay? They're the ones that make me scared. When I get on the freeway or the 10 going east, I'd be kind of nervous because... There are so many lanes and these people, you, there are so many accidents out here. People really do not know how to drive out here. So that's the one thing that I get scared about. But other than that, I love it here. And change, like I said, is a big word. It's a scary word. You know what I'm saying? But I guarantee you it's a scary word, but it's also can be a very, very good word. So what you need to do, sweetheart, is one, save up your money. Freeze your bank account so that way you don't be spending it frivolously and just spending on shit you don't need. Freeze your bank account. If you get an income tax refund, put that shit aside. People go out and get their income tax refund money and be quick to buy TVs and dumb shit. Like, I don't really understand people. And then they always quick to say, well, it's free money. It's free money. No, bitches, it's not free money. Income tax refunds are not free money. That money has already been taken out of your checks every fucking week or every two weeks when you get your paycheck. That's your taxes. So you've already worked for that so it's not really free money and if it was free money who gives a shit don't you want to save i cannot stand when people go out and spend all their money because they got this money they buy all this you know what i never was one to do that well i did do that a couple of times don't get me the lying but the shit that i bought i still have to this day meaning my tvs um and just the tvs that's it um my furniture 
uh, not this furniture. Well, yeah, my furniture, my dressers and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But some people just spend it frivolously. They want to get fly. They want to get fresh. You know, buy sneak shit like that. So if you get, if you didn't get your income tax refund yet, girl, put it aside. Freeze your bank account and put it in there. Every little bit of money you get. Put it in your bank. Freeze your bank account. You know what I'm saying? Freeze your motherfucking bank account. That's what you should do. Um, that is the, the best way to save money, and that's the easiest way to save money. Trust me when I tell you guys. I saved loads of money. By the time I was able to leave, I had like about $16,000 saved, okay? So save your money free but when i came here i had to buy furniture you know i had to live off of it for a while so you know uh was it no it wasn't even 16 it was like 12 excuse me 12 but it's worth it just freeze your money and you know what i'm saying that way you can move and you know just know that you have somebody in texas your cousin is going to allow you to live in their home until you get on your feet that right there is a blessing in the disguise it's a blessing and um just just think about it i just I, I always tell people, do shit for your kids to make their lives better. It's a big word. Change is a big word, but it's also going to be a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Texas is a beautiful place, and I would definitely try it out. You don't want to be one who said, damn, should have, would have, could have. You know what I'm saying? For real. But if I remember, I'll definitely post the place, um, the website that I used, the moving company that I used. It was super cheap to get here. It cost me $3,000 um, to have them move me. It's called... Um, band line something like that but if i don't remember please you guys put a comment in the thing below so that i can remember to put it in the description box but on that note i love you guys stay deep and delicious make sure you rate comment subscribe i gotta go get mum tea from school right now um and i'll see you guys soon